I get the vibe that Cage wanted me to just hit rec- record there. So Luca Nation up back with episode 756 and our uh, you know, kind of our home digs, you know, what you guys are used to, the, the, the old Zoom game. So hope you enjoyed some of the content from National. Don't get spoiled. Don't get spoiled. I'm getting a lot of messages of how good we sounded with microphones. Really? <laughs> A lot. They're like, oh man, that was such good audio quality. And I'm like, don't get used to it. Me and Andrew recording cars when we have to. <laughs> I, I'm gonna go a different route. I think for next year's national, we um, we'll have a crew. I'm not gonna say we're gonna have a videographer following us around. I don't even know if that's something that would I, I would want. I'm. You guys know I'm kind of a little bit more of a private guy. Uh, but it's something that we could definitely. I think we'll have a lot more content from next year's national. I agree. And here's the thing. There has to be sort of like a happy balance, right? Because obviously we're trying to promote the show. Obviously we're trying to, you know, get more people to hear the awesomeness that is our podcast. Because the fact that you and I have as few followers as we have is downright criminally undervalued. To use some influencer terms, criminally undervalued. But I realize now why that's the case. One, the man wants to keep us down. But let's just leave that for another episode. But two... I have like no pictures. People took pictures with us. Sure, plenty of them. People stopped, talked to us. You remember on uh, on Saturday night at the Borgata, no, uh, at Bally's, uh, I'm playing a stupid penny machine. And the next thing you know, one person asked me a question, a second person asked me a question. And yet now we have a semicircle of people doing a Coffee with Cage uh, episode basically on the floor next to the, the blackjack tables. And people are like, I can listen to you talk for hours. And I'm like, I mean, but no pictures of it. You know what I mean? Like, I, no, I'm not, hey, guys, camera crew, get over here and, and make sure the world knows that, you know, Andrew is awesome and that I'm great. Record, record a clip it and have it up on Instagram by 11, by 2, 2 p.m. the next day. Yeah, and I realize it because, you know, we do have people who work with us to put content out there and we say, Hey, you know, after, why don't we let people know what we did at national, what we liked. And they ask something as simple as, Hey, can you guys send a picture of the two of you together? I don't even have one. We We were together the whole week. So if you're listening to this and I know some people took pictures with us, maybe Luis MMA cards at the cigar night. I think we got in a picture with him together. We definitely got pictures. If you got some pictures, Andrew Stevens, you know, I mean, send us some photos. That way, we you can help us. Help us. You know, I mean, I'm reposting everybody who sends me something. Um, and but I, I also, it's just not us. You know, like I, I, people come up and they say hi. I say hi. You know, I don't follow it by saying, "Hey, make sure you're following me," or "Hey, post this." Hey, post a picture and I'll repost it. Or "Hey, send me the pic." I mean, like I didn't do any of that. I was on a panel for Panini. I don't have any pictures. I don't have any you have anything. Most an optic downtown. From don't have pictures. Art, don't have pictures. Don't have nothing. That's yours. That's half half yours. So be nice. How is it in Sasha T's pictures already? Because I traded it to him. You own. You How own. Did you own this already. Oh man, because I move fast. Because listen, while you are like saying you want lightning speed, it took me a, yeah, it took me less than an hour to get it graded and traded. Yeah. But you got to move at the national, man. You got to move. I mean, we got the thing at like four thirty. The show closes at six. I got to you know, make deals. But yeah, you own you own one point five sevenths of a Will Chamberlain rookie. Did you know that? I have no idea how you do what you do. <laughs> I spent an entire weekend with you, and uh, I'm like, this guy. This guy has. I think you have more hours in the day than the most. Listen, I will tell you that it it, it hits you. I mean, I saw some funny memes. I didn't hit you. I mean, not you, you crackhead. Like Lameem James or other, I, the Dewees. Hi, the Dewees. You know, they, they post pictures like, hey, uh, July 27th. And we're like, bright-eyed and bushy tails. And then the rest of it, it's just a blank slate. And then August 1st, hey, we're awake again, you know. Or so many people posted the same meme. It's like Christian Bale. And it's like, you know, day one of the national. And he's, you know, plump Christian Bale from like a Batman. And, uh, you know, then it's, you know, day five of the national and it's like Christian Bale and the machinist or Christian Bale, like it all emaciated and stuff. Um, let's Don't give in to those Luca nation. Don't give in to those memes. Cause we're better. This is separation season. I love today. We've crushed today. Okay. Do you know how many guests we already have scheduled for a new segment? Well, the better part. And when you tell me how many is how many have said no. And I'm betting the answer to that is zero. One. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm crowding, call them out. Call them out. 
I'm not, I already call, I call them out all the time. <laughs> I, think, I mean, as anything in life, there's nuance, you know, like obviously we want to all be on Gary's radar. We all want Gary's validation and support. Um, depending Gary on said no. Gary was the one. No. <clears throat> Ooh. I, I shoot my shot. It's, you know, a lot of people <coughs> with the episode where you talk about how I deal with rejection, right? Going mm -hmm. table to yeah. table, you know, dealing with rejection. I'm not after a while in sales and, and biz dev and all this game, you just get used to the notes. Like I've, I've dealt with rejection the last 15 years. It doesn't even feel like rejection. It feels more like I'll ask you in a few months. And I never try to ask with like, Hey, how does this benefit me? It's easy to ask. I asked for our community. So to give you guys the, the gist, the spiel, uh, what did we do last year? We did a 10 for 10, but mm -hmm. our show's grown. Our network's grown. I think our community's grown. And I, I thought, let's do a segment where we bring people on that were at national for 15 to 20 minutes all throughout the month of August to share their experiences with all of you guys who weren't able to be in attendance or all you guys that were in attendance, but more, most likely only saw 10, 20, 30 percent of what happened. So we're going to be doing that. We have amazing guests. Lefko has committed. Bro Namath has committed. Josh Luber has committed. Luber. Her. Great Dave booth. Max has committed. Chris Hodge and Josh have committed. I need to schedule them. I got to Asian spend some time with Josh, by the way. That was fun. I, I, but the point is, and we're going to get some ladies on that panel. It's not going to be 10 for 10 women of the hobby. It's going to be 10 for 10 women are a part of the hobby now. And that, they, dude, they show out. And I think last year was like the coming out party. Now it's like that that subset that group they're growing i i think women take are 10 15 percent of the hobby and no longer five or three i mean might even be more and it should grow it should be even more than that you know card porn working with them doing box breaks all kinds of crazy stuff so obviously um yeah man i mean it sounds great it sounds like we got a lot of stuff to look you know to look forward to in the coming month um or two months uh, a lot of great content a lot of great guests I got so, to yeah. take that off to you, man. Cages, you, so you guys know when I'm in a bad mood. You guys know. I, I wear it on my sleeves like Liber, Liberace painted with colors, right? That's that artist. Dude, you um, you live your life with a lot of grace. Like, you don't, you're not very, um, you're not hot headed. Like, cigar night, I was stressed. Cage was just moving and shaking, setting up, boom, 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 talking to this guy, making this guy laugh. Not me. I'm like, hey, what are you doing? Carry those boxes upstairs. Hey, <laughs> you're a partner? Good, do this. I'm like, right? Like, I'm like, I'm yeah. just stressed. I'm like, we, uh, and Cage is just living with grace. It would, we we got to give the team from Collectible, you know, down to, you know, the runners, everybody. We should, we should get a list of names and give every one of them a shout out. But like, yeah, we, I, I'm carrying a bunch of stuff up to the club to set up. And, you know, unfortunately, there was a kid sitting with a collectible hat by valet and Andrew was like you you come on you're carrying this box because <laughs> he had a I really like, oh, my dad my dad used so to funny. be like that my dad used to be the guy that when we would be driving to soccer tournaments and a friend would ask us to pick him up he would say hey can you meet us on that corner right by the main street <laughs> <laughs> well listen i'll give you credit as well and hey it's not going to be one of those you know reach around type of episodes here we can actually get into the, to meet the potatoes but dude every day you are able to go from zero to 100 in 13 seconds and then back from 100 to zero in 10 seconds. It is an amazing thing to watch. I couldn't do it. My heart would explode. What do you mean by that? Well, you start off – let's just use Saturday as an example because I could use every day. But let's just use Saturday as an example. And, and guys, you're going to get a glimpse because Saturday and Sunday, Sunday's episodes were you know, recorded in the collectible booth – very yeah. formal. So you didn't really get too many stories from us about, about, you know, Friday and Saturday, you know, events at the national. And there were definitely some events. There were definitely some stuff going on, trades and deals and all kinds of fun stuff. And, we, you know, that's why I'm happy we have a daily podcast, especially coming after the national. I mean, I don't know how people who have a weekly thing do this. You know, you know, I would need five weeks worth of episodes to go through and cover all the stuff we do. But we are lucky that we can do five episodes this week. We'll be done with five by Friday. So I'll give Saturday an example, right? Saturday, you uh, you know you came back from Philly after recharging the old batteries, and you said you were going to meet me. Um, you know, we met at, at a spot by my hotel where I picked up a chicken salad sandwich for you on a bagel, plain bagel that time, with a little jalapeno, tomato, lettuce, chicken salad, homemade chicken salad. It was good, homemade. Yeah, and they were very nice in that place. And you know, I waited for you, I picked you up, I brought you some water, specific water. He's very, he's a water snob, folks. This is Sencha. Do not buy him a Dasani. Do not, not buy him a Dasani. Um, and 
he is flying high like magnanimous Andrew. And we haven't had a chance to talk about this. I, I'm so excited to tell people. I show, He shows up. I get in the car, and I'm talking to some guys in the corner from Detroit. They were trying to hop in my Uber. Andrew clearly was not my Uber, nor could they get in the back seat because as I turned around, there were just donuts and bagels and just an array of food. And I'm like, oh, you shouldn't have. I'm going to eat all this right now. You know, was that 100 munchkins? I could take that down on the way to, you know, the National. No problem. It's five blocks. I can do 100 munchkins in five blocks. I'm hungry. So I said, what are you doing? He's like, I'm going to bring that into the show. I'm just going to, you know, our partners, you know, the people who we know, just people at tables, you know, people who we don't know. I'm going to ask them if they haven't had breakfast because these guys got to get up early. Because dealers get there early and they stay late and it's incredibly tiring work. And what's funny is here he is just all smiles, you know, happy to get his homemade chicken salad sandwich. And he stopped on his way after driving for an hour or whatever it took to get there. Not five minutes like everybody else, but an hour to get there. And he's like, ah, I just want to give out the donuts. I just want to give out the donuts. I want to, you know, do the whole deal. And so you ready for this? So, So he's at zero. Resting heart rate, you know, of like 12. Full on yogi mode, you know, like he's, he's, he's in a yurt. You know, he's smoking the vape pen. He's doing, you know, he's completely, he's at the base of the Himalayas. He's completely in his Zen mode and he's driving. And 45 minutes later, we still can't park the damn car, right? And we're being U-turned and we're being turned all over the place. And he is screaming. I mean, what are they doing? It's a bottleneck. It's a bottleneck. Bottleneck in the traffic. A bottleneck. He must have said bottleneck 50 times. God, you know. I question my entire existence. I'm like, this day is going to be terrible. It's like, this is horrible. This is the worst day ever. Why did I even come back to the show? We're never going to get in there. And he finally gets past the bottleneck. Of course, we're four cars away when they close the garage full. And he's about to jump out of the car to move a barrier to illegally park again in that spot that he got away with illegally parking. I'm like, please don't. It stresses me out. We're walking around the show for four hours. I'm not thinking about cars. I'm thinking about your car being towed and how we're going to get it back, right? And so at least he listens to me. We wound up parking all the way back at Bally's and having to walk about a half mile, maybe a little more, holding all of the donuts now. And he is pissed. But you know what? We talk on the way there. So he, he, he was zero, 100, 110 as we get out of the parking lot. And he's the place smells like piss. And I mean, it's just like he just, he is in the one spot did smell like piss. Oh my God. He's, and, but we walk and we talk and we talk about goals and we talk about what we've accomplished and what we're going to accomplish going forward. And he is calmed down and he is chilled and he walks into the show holding donuts, ready to do his thing, ready to be that guy, ready to be Andrew and give out the donuts to the dealers. And we're about to walk into PWCC. He's going to be thrilled to see him the dude's got cream cheese and knives and bagels just like i mean a spread and he's all happy he's back down to about 12 resting you know resting a bp and we get to the door and security says you can't bring that food in there and he's like what i'm not even i'm not eating it and uh, you can't bring it in so back to 100 but a quick flip of the switch on this one like charlie pooth right with the lights are he turns the switch and he turns around walks 10 feet away and starts yelling Free breakfast, <laughs> free breakfast, and is handing out donuts and bagels to people as they walk by. But the best part is, I don't know if he has like a swarm kind of look to him or whatever it is. People are not taking the food. I mean, it's legit free munchkins for donuts, and they're like looking at him with like a side eye. Like, is he really giving out? Like, is this traced with what does he with, want from me? Are these monkey pox munchkins? Like, what is he doing? Like, what's he giving out here? And uh, finally, people start the kids. The kids are like, I'll take a munchkin. And, he, he, he looks at me, he goes, you know what, Cage? I got to create a sense of urgency. I'm like, with food? Oh, no. Mid-story. Who? That's Julie. We got to wrap this up. We're, we're about to go zero to 100 real quick. So but he's right there, and he's, he, says, he says, hey, uh, 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 I got to create a sense of urgency. With free food, free, free, free food, sense of urgency. He says, watch this. I'm throwing this food out in five minutes. I'm throwing this food out in five minutes. If you don't get it, it's going to garbage. It's going to garbage. Food's going to get thrown out. People are like, boom. What, get money, Adrian, get money. I learned it from whatnot. Giveaway, five seconds. Guys, I'm not I'm not holding this forever. Five seconds. Five seconds. I'm throwing this all out. It works, Cage. I mean, listen. Uh, if people take the food. Oh, I learned more about human nature in the 20 minutes we spent instead of going into the show 
than just giving it out. There are people there, give, give credit, Daryl from Flex NBA came over and started yelling, oh, Luke and Nation. We weren't saying our podcast. We weren't like trying to, we just want to give the food away so we can go into the show. Right, we weren't. But he's yelling, "Follow Luca Nation. These guys got a podcast. Have some free breakfast." It, it would actually cause more problems. Follow Luca Tiger LeBron podcast on Instagram, and they'd be like, "How do you spell that? Why do you do yeah, that?" Yeah, how do you spell that? Yeah, what are you doing? You got cream cheese. You got cream cheese. Mm-hmm. And I mean, the, my favorite are the guys who walk up after watching people take food. It's like it's like the king's court. It's like they have a taster to make sure that that the king doesn't eat the first bite. They have somebody to taste it to make sure it's not poisonous, and then the king eats it after that. I I saw grown men watching children and take the food and not keel over and die and then they saunter over after watching for like 15 minutes and they come on this uh would you happen to have a sesame bagel with some cream <laughs> cheese spread and i'm like oh yeah sure we're running a friggin' uh, a diner here well, you know catch a bacon egg and cheese for this guy yeah you want a bacon egg and cheese? oh how do you want your eggs over hard <laughs> like what, what else can we get you you know so but anyway we spent about 20 minutes of uh, of our last day there giving out breakfast and what's funny is i thought we would have Andrew at 100 again. But it wasn't. He was happy to give the food out. He was happy to do this good deed. A lot of people clearly came in without catching breakfast, without getting food. They were happy. The kids were grabbing handfuls of munchkins. Um, and, uh, you know, it was good stuff. I was wearing a Chick-fil-A shirt. About a half dozen people asked me if I worked for Chick-fil-A. I told them I might as well. I'd let them pay me in chicken. Um, and, yeah, I mean, it, it was fun. We got to meet people. We, You know, a couple folks stopped by and just stood there and hung out. While we were, you know, they, they were making bagels themselves and eating breakfast. Um, it just, it gave me an idea also for maybe, you know, a coming event. Cool. You know what I mean? Maybe Saturday or Friday on the National or Mint Collective, whatever it is, you know, right outside. There should be, you know, a hosted breakfast. People do events at night and, you know, no one's doing a, hey, walk into the National. Now, oh. sure, there's probably a reason for that. They want to sell the food inside and it's probably not good and the whole deal. But you need to work with the vendor. And I bought it at retail. All that stuff costs 96 bucks. Yeah, ninety six dollars. In, in, pre- in preparation, you can do so much more. But the point is, dude, you know me. I, you know I try to figure myself out. Like, you know, I like to read. I like to learn. Personal growth, like that's not bullshit. That's probably the thing I work on the most. Cage mm-hmm. knows it to the point where it's like, dude, all this stuff is t- theory. Like, what what's their actual application? The application is I'm very hot headed, and I get hot headed when I feel that the world, whatever that means to you, is unfair. Okay. And I think we all get like that at points in our lives, right? What I found is when that happens, the best way to calm down is to be of service to others. And if you could be of service to others using your God-given talents or skills, and if no one's told you what your talents are, I think you know them. But if you don't, go ask the people closest to you. They'll go and tell you what your special giftedness is. And if you take your special giftedness, your special talents, and use them to serve others, you're going to be the happiest person in the world. So I ha- now have mechanisms like the way we know when we gain weight, we have to do this, do push ups and walk. Now I know when I am angry or aggressive or annoyed, get out of ego because that's ego. That's about self and go and serve. So I, I've learned that over the years because when I haven't utilized that a day like that, the negativity in the morning would compound so much to in, in the evening, you're stressed, you're tired, you're anxious, you're getting in arguments, and it ruins your entire day. And what we want is to live blissfully. We want to live joyfully. We want to live happily. And sometimes it takes tools like that. Like the, the traffic wasn't my fault. It wasn't in my control. But how do you recenter? And it's getting out of self, getting out of ego, and going to be of service. It's easy said, easier said than done now 48 hours later. You know it's what I mean? Practice. During it, you are uh, insane. It's a practice. It's, it's not a. It's 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 no different than push-ups. Well, see, I don't know about either of these things. I don't do push-ups and I don't do anything. But I will tell you this: it was hi, Ariel. It was fun. She's it was back fun. from Hawaii. She's back from Hawaii. They didn't even apologize for missing cigar night. She, That's she, right. You know what she said? I would rather be in Hawaii. I no know there will be nice. more cigar nights. I did. There will be. Thank you. I appreciate that. That's a compliment. And you might not get another chance to go to Hawaii for a long time. So I think you did the right thing. So, um, that's a dead body. I mean, he's dragging behind it's good. It's cool. Whatever. Um, I, I gotta tell you, man, that guy never um, bought us eggs, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> so I will tell you what's fun, right? Is, um, we tie stuff together. Like I if you love, guys are the OG listeners and you know what that's from, that's better than any movie clip. The people listening the whole time, 760 ish episodes. Uh, I think 
today we'll get over like 600,000 listens just on like Spotify kind of, I mean, it's just pretty crazy. And that's on account of YouTube and stuff. Um, but yeah, man, I mean, I got to tell you, one of the weirdest things is people coming up to you and saying they listen to you every day and then meaning it, right? Like they listen to you every day and then they say to you, congrats on the 47 pounds of weight loss, not 46, not 50, not weight loss, 47, which means, yes, they actually do listen every day. They know that heading into the national, I was trying to lose 50 pounds and only got to 47. Of course, I lost another five at national. I'll let you know that. Did you really? Yeah. And this is, it's another learning thing, right? You don't think about this, but I I got there on Wednesday and, you know, um, you and I met up and we went to uh, set up at the Hard Rock Mm -hmm. and we didn't have a meal. We didn't eat the entire time we were there. You know, we set up, we did the cigar event, and then we, what did we, I don't even remember what we did after that, right? But, you know, we stayed out, and we went back to the hotel, and the next morning, everybody wants to wake up and go to the card show, and you wake up, and you go to the card show, and, you know, you run in, and, um, you know, you do your Thursday thing, and, you know, I'm running around like crazy, and then it's like, get back, and we have an event Thursday night, right? I mean, what did we do? I don't even remember what the hell we did Thursday night. I mean, it's just all a blur, it really is. I mean, it's funny, I'm trying to you know, in my brain, you know, try to remember what it was that we did. Right. And, you know, I can't tell you. Oh, Thursday was, yeah. Th- Thursday night. Yeah. Thursday, Thursday. I don't remember what we did Thursday night, but whatever it is, I didn't eat dinner. Oh, it was trade night. Right. It was trade night. Yeah, so we did the little, show. You got a little lippy. Yeah, we did the show and we went, I, I, I did get a little lippy, but we talked about that already, but, but uh, we, we did the show and it wasn't like, okay, Show ends at six, trade night starts at seven or eight, go grab some dinner and come back. It was like trade, the, the, the show ends at six. We stayed in the show talking to people to like 637 and rolled into the trade night. We went downstairs, hung out in the lobby for a little while while the line was there and the fire marshals were kicking us out. But there was no food. There's no place to eat. So we did the trade night. I went back to the hotel and didn't eat. It's not that there's no place to eat. It's just <clears> like... You don't really want to eat inside because there's long lines and kind of junk shit. Yeah, I'll tell and then you. Outside, you're like, I'm not walking to like these corner stores and gonna go get food. Like, I don't trust them one bit. After trade night, I went back to um, my hotel and I walked through the marketplace area. And Hooters was actually taking <laughs> not just for wings. It wasn't open. It was just taking like takeout. You know, like almost like room servicey kind of thing. So I walked up to the the, the manager who was you know, it's just people standing around. I said, "How long is it to just take out some wings?" It's like ten o'clock. You know. How long is it? Is it probably going to take two hours. I'm like, two hours? I got to wait two hours and then go to my room and eat wings alone at midnight and fall asleep? Nah, I'll just pass. And I just went upstairs and I thought to myself, like, all right, I could find someplace to eat. I just, you know, we just crashed, you know? So, and then Friday, back to the show. You weren't there. I went to the show. I slept. I slept a little Friday. I yeah. slept in because it's, you know, I mean, I was a little tired. I slept a little Friday, went back to the show, made some deals, made some moves happen. You know, we recorded an episode on Friday. Um, I got a text there in the middle of the episode. You should see my face, guys. Check out that Friday episode on YouTube. and You can see the bad news coming in by text. But I turned that bad news into good news. And by Friday night, I sat down at the collectible dinner. Um, <laughs> I was so out of it that I got the dinner days mixed up, and I didn't go to the right restaurant. So the, 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 the Saturday dinner was at Il Molino, and the um, – the Friday dinner was at Old Homestead, and Old Homestead is at the – where the hell is it? Is it a Borgata? No, yeah, Old Homestead is at the Borgata, and El Molino is at Hard Rock. So I left the Tropicana on one end of the boardwalk and went down the boardwalk to the Hard Rock looking for Il Molino, got there, and they said the collectible dinner is tomorrow. So I had to get an Uber and go later to Borgata. That Old Homestead was my first, like, meal. Got there Wednesday afternoon, didn't really eat a meal until Friday night. And it wasn't like I was starving or hungry or anything like that. I was like, wow, you know, like. Well, like, we run off caffeine. Like, I, I, I drink a lot of coffee. You drink a lot of soda. Soda kind of, it can kill your appetite. When you're lazy, you can eat no matter what. Like, I, yeah, I, I mean, but we look, I more. bought, like, pistachios. And I had in the room, like, some snacks and stuff. But, like, a sit-down meal. Also, like, Friday, you weren't there. Like, I'm not going to, I don't really want to sit down. That's part of it. Like, I don't want to sit down by myself. Like, I was like, oh, I got a meal coming. You know, we got another meal in Molino on, on Saturday night. Like, I ate well while we were there. We had great restaurants. Can you talk like, about El Molino for a minute? Because this hobby is fascinating, man. So we got we got El Molino. What do you got? How many people were there? Ooh, if I had to guess, probably 45, maybe 50. Three beautiful ladies, right? 
in uh, the DraftKings representatives. Yes. Yeah. Our hobby doesn't talk to them? You talk to them the whole night. Uh, well, yeah. I, it, it's – yeah. So when they introduced themselves to our table and there were four guys named John in a row, I, I was the fifth one. And I, I, I said, all right. I was was four know. Johns in a row? Yeah, it was, all, it was the whole other side. John, John, John. And they're like, their heads are spinning. Like, my name's John, John. I'm like, do I say my name is John just to be that dick? And instead I said, my name is Cage. And that was even worse. Cage? That's your name? That was yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Was Jack Settleman, the youngest guy there, could not be bothered to stand up for anybody. Oh, I like Jack. Oh, he's wow. an interesting character. He remembered. He's like, hey, remember we were at this dinner last year at the National and you were trying to tell me uh, about Panini and they were getting a wallet? When did that happen? I'm like, yeah, like last month. It took him 11 months from that dinner for them to get the wallet. Uh, but they did get it. So, I mean, he remembered being at the same dinner last uh, last year. Um, yeah, I mean. Listen. He doesn't separate from his right-hand man bodyguard for more than ever. <laughs> I don't know. Let, I, haven't, I didn't sit I with him either think. time. The I first dinner, weird target bullseyes that I can't get off of. It's it's irrelevant. It was it, listen it, for me those the two dinners at Collectible couldn't have been more different. My first night, the table I sat at, I sat left go to my left side. Robman's PC and Josh from Cardboard Chronicles, you know, uh, card ladder, yeah. straight to my right, and that was funny. Like that was just a night, you know, you know, uh, and and it was one of these like speaking kind of events, right? Where you know where Ezra from Collectible was like almost like, it was almost like school. It was like calling on people to like comment and talk, you know? And he's like, okay, let me hear from, you know, the, uh, how about Alt, do you want to speak? And he's like, hey, content creators, Cage, what do you think about that? And I'm like, all right, I guess I'm talking. Let me, you know, clean this piece of you know, steak out of my teeth and, you know, go ahead and, and chat. But it was, it was kind of cool. Um, you know, Sitman Lefko is always fun. He is an interesting cat. And he had just gotten back his Dwayne Wade with the 10 auto. So he was kind of showing that off, um, the limited logos. Um, I think is what he had. Uh, but yeah, I mean, just, just fun stuff. The 2003 exquisite. And then the next night we, you know, we were there with the uh, basketball card guy, football card guy, you the DraftKings team, um, you know, the team from, from Beckett and, you know, like you say, Jack Settleman card ladder guys were over in a different corner. So I didn't really get a uh, chance to you know chat with them. I talked to Chris for a little while. I told him he should listen to our big data episode and, you know, how the show, you know, one of the bigger takeaways that I think a lot of people have is just how important that data is data is an interesting game man uh, we've talked about it i'm here's my one concern man. i'm gonna add, we're gonna have them on um to hear their recap but what my i'm curious what you guys think actually two topics what you guys think if you get a good deal in today's day and age that data resets so now the 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 ceiling in in this market is that data so, right, and because everybody's working off the same platform, if you buy a card that has been steady seven fifty to a thousand dollars, and you happen to find one that's a good buy, and people don't see it, and you buy it for five hundred and four dollars, and then you're like, you know what, I'm going to try to flip this because I just got a good buy on this, and you and bring I'm it not to a table. My niche either, like I'm not, you, I'm not a baseball you, guy. Well, you bring it to the table, and then the the dealer is like, all right, well, I'll give you four hundred for it because the last sale is five hundred four. No one looks at the fact that you got a good buy on it, and that the all the comps before that were seven fifty to a thousand. They just look at that last sale and say, "Okay, last comp's five hundred four. Uh, I'll give you four twelve. I'll give you four twenty five. That's a great topic. I'd love to see what second you know, topic, Luca Nation. So I probably got my my I probably got the card that I'm the most excited for in my life last night. And I want you Ooh. guys to answer this. Yeah, the Mahomes man. That's one of my. I think that was one of the best buys. That's a cool card. It's a one of one. Uh, patch NFL players patch with an on card auto all black. It's a laundry tag, right? Huh? It's a laundry tag, right? Laundry tag, yes. But I'm curious. Does anyone know this? Why does Mahomes not have any game worn? None of his stuff dating back to 2017, flawless. And correct me if I'm wrong. Um, he has no game worn stuff. And I'm curious if you guys know this. I mean, we have some people who I don't know. I believe used to actually work with the Chiefs' offensive line and all that stuff. They listened to our show at one point, so. Well, you know, there's always that. Maybe you guys know. Maybe it's a deal where Mahomes doesn't give away his jerseys after the games. He keeps all of them. But I'm curious if you guys know why Mahomes doesn't have any game-worn patches. I don't know the answer. You telling me that was the first time I had heard that. It's interesting, I just right? assume no one had game-use patches from 2017 until no, now because they're not they using them. 2017, they definitely have them. Oh, shit. Dude, Deshaun, thoughts? You know, I could go both ways on the topic. I could. Um, you know, six games. Is it really a six-game suspension when he was out all of last year? Um, you know, depending upon how you wanted to, you Is know, address the, 
for last I year? He, I don't know if he was on the contract. I don't know, you know. I he guess he was, right, because he was traded. But, I mean, you know, I, I don't know whether he got paid or – but he didn't get to play. You know what I mean? Like his team didn't get his services, right? He didn't get to actually play and add stats and do all that stuff. I, I could look whether he got he paid. Didn't Simmons, I don't know. But he, got but he hasn't played since January of 2021. So when it's all said and done, you know, the NFL has kept him off the field for what amounts to 22 months when he finally gets back on in October, week seven. So you could put it that way. Um, I will tell you, I had some punishment is when it hits your wallet and you lose 25 million bucks. for not. Yeah. I mean, they knew this was happening and, you know, they obviously they were able to kind of be very crafty with what uh, what they did. You know, they only gave him a one million dollar contract for this year. Um, So he's only going to wind up losing like three hundred thousand and change. Um, And he he got a 15 million dollar portion of his you know upfront bonus yesterday. He doesn't lose any of that because that's not hit. The game checks are what gets hit. So yeah, he and his agent did a very good job, you know, realizing that this would happen. Even if he lost a whole year, the max he was going to lose would be a million dollars. I will tell you, if you look at precedent on this, uh, the Ben Roethlisberger is the closest one, although that's one alleged victim, also just civil, not criminal, and he got six games as well, and that was actually appealed down to four. Um, you know, I don't like the language in the, um, you know, in the judge's ruling where it considers this a nonviolent crime. It is sexual assault that's being alleged. Uh, I know that that some people might think of that as splitting hairs, um, but you know, the nonviolent crime punishments. The precedent for that, this is the largest one. There's never been a quote nonviolent, um, you know, uh, suspension of more than six games, and this was. You know, for for personal conduct violation, this is the judge considered this a nonviolent, and I what think that judge? might is this an NFL judge? There's a federal. Uh, it's like an arbitrator, like a mediator. Um, it's a, a former judge who comes in and mediates the case on behalf of of and the players' association said they're not going to do it. I give Darren Ravel some credit. He posted a poll as soon as this came out and got thousands of votes on it, and about seventy percent of people voting. And you're talking about a lot of votes. This is one of those polls that like three people voted. About seventy percent of people voting said he should have been suspended the whole year. So the public perception, at least of people who follow Darren Ravel, um, seem to think that this is light. Um, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to ignore that. Um, I will tell you that before we make any judgment on this, we were not there. We don't know the evidence that was presented. We don't know who said what. It's very difficult, even you know, collecting a survey like that or whatever it is. We don't know what was presented to the judge. We don't know whether or not any of the alleged victims, the civil lawsuits complainants, cooperated. We don't know if the NFL even reached out to all of them. And whether or not there was some form of, you know, you know, victim shaming or, you know, what kind of questions they were asking. And, you know, those people might just want to, you know, move on with their lives and, you know, might not have been as cooperative. And maybe the case against him wasn't as strong because of that. So, you know, we all sit here in judgment. Like chicken with the, with the victims, right? Because we, we, they, yeah. they're also the ones they have to deal with this for two years hanging over their heads. Like we, we think of Deshaun and all his money. But then yeah. there's also eight, 18, whatever, 20 people. Who they also have to live with this. They're not getting paid that money. And they were like, yo, I just want to go. They may yeah. want to be like, I want to go and live my life. I've already yeah. lost so much time. It's, I mean, they settled most of the civil suits. You um, know what bothers me? Yeah, shoot. I hate when people compare uncomparable things and like it catches on. Like, like um, someone compared this to the Calvin Ridley suspension. And I'm like, like, don't compare shit that's not comparable. Right. Yeah. I mean, because it, it sounds, it's, it's a great, if you want to have a specific way of saying something, it's like, Hey, this guy got suspended for a whole year for betting $1,500 parlays and look what Deshaun Watson didn't only get six games, but you know, there are rules, right? There are specific written rules. You know, the personal conduct one is a more of a, of a catch all, you know what I mean? It doesn't have like a no, no betting against uh, and here's what you're going to face. Right. And it's not do, Calvin you know? Ridley versus Deshaun. It's, you follow your rules. This guy follows his own rules, and it should be have its own precedent and have its own. You know, like I, I, I hate when people take that. And I'm a big Josh Gordon fan, huge Josh Gordon fan. That guy hasn't played at all, and he's a. An right. Talent. His- but Josh Gordon, people compare Josh Gordon. They say Josh Gordon out of the league for years because of weed. Deshaun Watson does this six games. To just to say that, that's ridiculous. First it of all, Josh man. Gordon had multiple, 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 you know, infractions. And you know, that's how it works, right? Three strikes. Josh Gordon had like eleven strikes, you know. Um, and yeah, I I I actually appreciate what you're saying. 
not only do, you, do you, we will never know on the outside looking at the nuances, the facts that were presented during the mediation, but yeah, I mean, you know, that's just within the claim itself, within this case itself, you know, comparing apples to oranges, you know, with the other other players. I mean, I did with Ben Roethlisberger just to say that that was the closest comparison I could come up with. But even those, they're, you know, two very, very different cases. But, I mean, we'll see how it goes. I'm pretty sure that the league has until Thursday to appeal the suspension. Um, you know, it's I'm sure. for us because, Cage, from a standpoint, we're investors, right? So, like, when a company, which is faceless, right, mm -hmm. typically has a scandal – like Coinbase has a scandal right now, right? Yep. Insider trading and all that stuff. You, people still will invest, right? But when it's a person, it's like, and then cards, you have this like a little bit of more, like I'm curious what his market does. Like I'm really genuinely curious. Ray well, Rice listen, market never rebounded. The yeah. market doesn't like uncertainty, right? So at least I would think temporarily, you, you now maybe on Thursday will have some certainty. You know, people will know. Uh, people will know, okay, he's going to be playing in week seven. Not he's out for a whole year. Like this was the big event. Yeah. I don't think they're gonna appeal this. I mean, you know, the we'll see. We'll know on Thursday, right? You know, I think he could appeal. I think the league could appeal. You know, my hope would be that oh, the league could appeal to go high. Could do more. Yeah, the league could appeal and say we think it should be a year. And I think what happens is they give oh. that 48, 40, 72 hour period because the league is probably gonna you know do one of these like, you know, like test the wins. And see how this falls. And if the public perception is that this is fair, they won't do anything. But if the public perception, a la Darren Ravel's poll, is this isn't enough, the league has to protect the shield, not the shield, one of one card shield. The shield is the representation of the league. The league has to go out there and put on a face and say, you know, this isn't enough. So, the, you know. The thing, the thing in like he said, she said cases, right? Which is this is, and this is he said, a lot of she's said. It's not a good look for the NFL. It's not. A, it's not a look that they want to keep perpetuating as well. So it's not even like guilty. And is is he fairly punished? Right. But remember, balance the scales out. Right. It's not a good look to keep perpetuating this. But but is it worse of a look for them that they have the ability to you know that to to try to punish somebody for you know this type of behavior and they don't want to be viewed as a league that goes soft on this. Know what I mean? So fucking dude. It's crazy, but we'll know. We'll know by Thursday. Relentlessly for deflating footballs, right? Yeah, I mean, look, the the, the league has to. They have to protect themselves. They have to protect their image, right? That's that is that is the key, right? You know, they have to be you know above reproach. Uh, trade deadline deals. Um, the Padres picked up Hader, who I would think is you know the number one closer, you know, top closer in the league, and they still have a lot of prospects. And some people think they're still in the running for Soto. And that could be really ridiculous. They pull off a doubleheader of Soto and Hater, and now you're, you're, you're talking about Tatis and Soto in the same lineup. Yeah, there's your Soto card. Everybody likes that card, but we'll, we'll talk about that card specifically. Put that to the side, and we'll talk about that with the card letter, guys. Do you want okay? me to uh, – do you think I should re-slab re it, PSA 1010? Maybe. I mean, it's definitely a 10 auto. I, I brought it to them. They said it's a 10 auto. Yeah. So um, – yeah, a lot. The Yankees picked up, um, you know, Frankie Montas. Probably, you know, I would have rather had Castillo, but you know, he's the second best pitcher available. Shows up their rotation. They've got some, you know, they've got some some bullpen depth. I would have liked to have landed a, you know, a big name. I don't hear the Yankees attached to Soto. Like to land a big name. The Yankees guy. were uh, were were in on on Otani, but the most recent reports, and they gave like a, a real deal for Otani, but the most recent reports are the Angels are going to keep him. Um, and I think you're talking about a three team race now from the last 24 hours to Soto between the Cardinals, the Dodgers, and the Padres. Although the Yankees have a way of, you know, if an Otani thing doesn't work out, kind of sneaking in and, you know, getting that phone call and saying, okay, you know, here we are, the Nationals. We got our best offer, we think, from the Cardinals. What can you do to beat it? And I, you know, they have a way in the, in the last 24 hours of kind of sneaking in and doing that. At least George Steinbrenner did. Um, yeah, man. I mean, I'm excited. Yankees is who you want to see? Oh, that would be great. And they were making an offer on him, but uh, the Angels came out and said today that they, they plan to keep him. But, it, you know, normally when somebody says we're going to be planning to keep him the day before the deadline. I'm never selling my Soto ever. That gold, I'm, I'm keeping it. I'm not shopping around anymore. We'll see what happens. It's going to be a fun 24 hours. There's been a lot of moves made. We'll see if there are more moves made. And, and sometimes championships are won. In this 24 hour period here leading up to the trade deadline. Not my um, 2014 Royals. <laughs> I love that team. 
I mean, it's also great to build. We have so many stories from national guys. We're already 40 minutes in. You got anything to, to take us home? Anything to close it out? I didn't get to wear this Tiger shirt. I'm glad. So um, put it on. Austin is home safe. That was weird. That was very yeah. weird because, Kate, I, do you, should we not scoop it? Like, I, I, we, I should, we should bring him on. We should bring him on. I'd like to because what was interesting, he was the nicest kid ever. He was such a nice kid, and, and he is such a nice kid. Wait, stop. But, like, we we were with him 3, 4 a.m., right? Mm-hmm. Normal, not drunk, like, not into, I mean. I, getting I, donuts. Getting donuts, just talking. Like, I, I that was weird. When I woke up to, to those texts, was that this morning? It was yesterday. That was yesterday. That was, that was odd. Yeah. So we, we, we can talk about that. I mean, listen, that's community, right? There are people in the community. I know Jacob was under the boardwalk looking for him. Belika Jacob was like under the boardwalk looking because nobody knew where he was. And we'll get the details. I, I am uh, The full details are not out there. But, you know, it's one of those things, right, where while it's going on, the hobby is community. We're a community. We're a community. You know, some of the community bound together to look for him, try to find him. Some of the community, you know, continue to do their deals. <laughs> And didn't even know about it. So it's, it's interesting stuff. All right. We'll wrap. I mean, that was a lot. That was a long episode. That was like a national episode. We, we covered just about everything. Fun, banter, Listen. NFL, baseball. You're a little bit frozen. I think you got to bounce. Yeah. Love you, Luca Nation. We'll be back tomorrow. Be on the lookout. We're going to do um, sort of like Yeah, it's a, a little laggy. Team. It's weird. It's a little laggy. You'll catch up. But let, let me just, just let people know. We'll be doing... We want to bring people on who have different voices, different opinions, different experiences from national that could share it with you. Uh, we'll be doing that all of August. I think you guys are going to love it. We're going to do a post. If you guys could recommend some people that you'd love to see, we're going to do our best. You guys know I love outreach. So I'll be outreaching individually to people. But if you guys have recommendations, you're like, Hey, I'd love to hear from this person or this woman or this young man or this young girl, whoever, or this group, happy to, happy to have them on reach out. Let us know who it is. Yeah, and you know we'll also try to talk about some of our deals. I'll talk to you guys about how we turned a Zach Wilson into a Will Chamberlain rookie in an episode to come. That's a tease. You know, I didn't just know like about that. that deal. And just like that. So thank you all for listening to another episode of Lucas, Tigers, and Bronzo Mai. I wanted to tell you about a new service that we have starting as of today, and I'm really, really excited to bring it to you guys. So... As a part of our partnership with SGC, we got 50 free submissions every single month. And many of you have taken advantage of that. And it's amazing that we could have the opportunity to 650 episodes, 675 episodes in to go ahead and give back to our community. As people were sending those cards in, they asked, can we send 5, 10, 20 more cards to you guys? We'll pay for it, but we wanted them graded with SGC. You guys know SGC is turning cards around in 13 to 14 business days, uh, have incredible customer service, and their secondary market values are going up day after day after day. And that's exciting for the hobby and exciting for the grading landscape. So we didn't want to just rush into it. We wanted to do it right. And what we did was I relocated here to Boca Raton, Florida. I opened up a P.O. box maybe five minutes away from SGC, and I will be hand delivering and hand picking up the cards. So you don't have to worry about anyone else touching your cards. It will be me and I will update you every step of the way. So here's how it's going to work. I'm going to personally pick up the cards from a PO box, prep them, new card saver, new penny sleeve, and deliver them to SGC every single Tuesday. Why Tuesday? Well, it lets the stragglers over the weekend come back through on Monday and gives me a day to prep, and it basically gives SGC the entire week to work on grading those cards. Once your cards pop, only then at the end of the process will you be paying for the service. It's $25 per card, simple as that, and the turnaround times have never been faster. We're hearing right now 13, 14, less than 20 business days. So there it is, 9170 Glades Road, number 135 is the P.O. Box in Boca Raton, Florida, 33434. 9170 Glades Road, number 135, Boca Raton, Florida, 33434. Of course, you could shoot me an email or shoot me a text anytime, and I'm always available. 
many of you already have my email. It's I am Andrew Goldberg at gmail.com or my cell phone number 215-519-9154. Reach out with any questions. I could walk you through the process. I've hopped on the call with quite a few of you, and I'm happy to do that. Love you, Luca Nation.